All right, everybody, welcome back to the Regal Rhinoceros tutorials with my class. Everybody say, hey. hey. All right, very good. Today we are going through curves. So if I happen to stop in the midst of this lecture, not really a lecture, it's more like a, a lab to address an issue. That's what happens. <clears throat> all right, so last time we went over layout. Today we're going through all the line commands and like everything is kind of built on one another, like we established why you need points to define an air, uh, a location in 3D space, and you have a point to another point equals a line. And then you can build a surfaces off a groups of lines, and you can build a solid off of a bunch of surfaces. So we're just starting with the base, and there's lots of uh, different tools you can use. Let's just get out the, the, the curve tool. I, I showed you all last time how it worked to make a polyline, if I want to make one, if I want to make multiples, I have another selection for that. And then I'm hitting right click when I'm done. You can either hit close through the enter key or you can right click. Cool. Let's see, I want to show you all something else. Oh, the sketch tool. Is it this one? No. Fine. We're going to just Command tool, how about sketch? Click and drag to sketch. Okay. Now if you finish it, it'll clean it up. This is good for just <clears throat> doing concepts on a, on a fly or trying to get a general shape that you want. But if you really want something that's articulate, you kind of have to use the Adobe Illustrator version of the line tool. So lines are quite easy. I found another one that was interesting. Uh, point clouds. We won't do a lot about point clouds. I have all these points here. If you're doing 3D modeling, a lot of them, not 3D modeling, but 3D scanning, a lot of them build point clouds and then they triangulate so make all these little triangles from the point clouds and then you have a 3D model. But it'll be pretty rare that we, uh, we go over that check my list points I do want to show you all something cool it's it's not very useful yet but let me turn this to shaded right click on the word and I can transform this shape into points if I want to it's a drape over there we go drape point grid over objects but so it's pretty. It's a point cloud that's draped over a sphere. So if I wanted to, I can make a mesh out of this. We'll get into making meshes on a different day. But other than looking neat, I don't really know any practical purposes. Go back to my full view. And just a reminder, if you ever get lost within, go to your four corners or your four windows. And it resets it for you. So let's. I want to make two hearts, okay? Why are you snickering at me? All right, I want this exact shape on the opposite side. What command should I use? Yes, y'all have experience with this before. Okay, we have two problems. I can. Join these, and it'll make it from two individual lines to one line, but it still won't be closed. So I'm going to go ahead and join it. Never, never group it, because grouping really doesn't do anything to the shape itself. I'm going to join it, and I still got an issue, because that's obviously an open curve, and it's hard to build from open curve, especially if you want to print solids. You had to get things closed. I found one of these this morning, and I wish I knew which one it was. Let me pull the curve menu down. Close curve. I'm going to ask it to close these open curves, and it does that. So right here, it's not as helpful as you may think it is. But if you're working on something that's rather large, you can't tell if this small object is closed or not. So the only way to find out is either A, zoom in to the closed section or the open section and fix it, or run that option of taking open curves and changing them into closed curves. 
it should be able to save you some frustration later. So if I want to make the different, if I want to make it entirely new, this is going to be a funky heart. <laughs> that is pretty ugly. All right, so if I did an ugly drawing, but I don't want to go back and redraw the entire thing, how do I edit this guy? Any guesses? Yep, points. And these points go through the line. These are kind of anchoring the line. So I can come in here and change. And man, that was really good alterations I made on the fly. All right, turn this off by right clicking. The mirror, can't, mirror command is in transform. This is a little hint for later stuff, but you can transform almost anything. You can transform points, you can transform curves, solids, and surfaces. When I get to something like cage edit, it's gonna be really cool to uh, show you how to transform points. Me and Connor were talking a little bit last class and how I never use planar. So I'm going to just I'm going to join these first. Make some copies of this heart. I want that one. Just to kind of give me a little interference. All right, so if I turn planar on, which I'm not very familiar with, Connor says that if I want to draw like an outline of a gummy bear, ah, y'all see what just happened? Well, I have midpoint, center, and intersection all on. So it was planar at first until I snapped to where it intersected with my, uh, my myriad of hearts. But now I've got a shape I don't know what to do with. So either I can come back and draw it, I'm going to take planar off just for this example, or I can do pullback. Pullback and project are similar but different. I'll explain that a little bit more in a second. So I'm going to take this curve, and I want to pull back straight to this flat surface, and it's found in the curve menu. So curve, curve from objects, project and pull back. Pull back is the one I use most often, but I'll show you the difference in a second. I'm going to pull back to this surface, and now I have the flat original one that I wanted that isn't all messed up. See? All right. Delete my weird gummy bear. Hide the hearts. Actually, let's, let's use a heart. We might just be a, a heart happy day. Have y'all ever had it's Quaker Oats, but they're whole hearts instead of Cheerios? Yeah. They're so good, but I can't find them anymore. Anybody on the internet knows where to find whole hearts, you let me know. Because they're delicious. I'll get another surface. Everybody understand like the idea of concentric circles? I don't want my center on. That's not right. Make this big. Delete that. Redo the circle command from the center. Good. So if you ever did math or geometry, this is the idea of the concentric circles. They're all offset. Projection works similar like concentric circles or concentric spheres. So we'll have two examples. I'm going to have a sphere on this side. Just have it even. This plane. Okay. Now I'm going to put a, my heart above both. Copy paste. All right. So if I do, we'll do pull back because it's more and more favorite. Pull back this curve to that surface. It pulls it straight, correct? Let's try it over here. Pull back this curve to this surface. It changed, didn't it? You see how it got smaller? It's that the idea of concentric circles, right? Or concentric spheres. If there was a sphere intersecting this heart, if I told it to pull back, 
according to the same, uh, I guess, degree or angle, it's going to make it smaller. Inversely, if I had a large sphere on top of this and I did pull back, it'd make it larger. So let's delete, and I'll show you the different way of project. So if you want to project this curve on this surface, we're going to get the same output. It pulls straight. If I want to project this curve on this surface, guess what? It pulled straight. So project pulls in one direction, while pullback has different rules you have to follow, either the concentric circles or concentric spheres or All right, let me get rid of some of these examples. Delete, delete. Nope, come back. This is one I was playing around this morning and found interpolate on surface. And I think it's going to end up being part of your weekend assignment. Sorry, Hart, you got to go. Wait, why can't I collect you? Oh, I know why. Hide you might bring you back later. And I want to interpolate on surface, which means I can choose a surface and draw on it. So in the top view, it doesn't really mean anything to us yet. But in your orthographic views, and we'll finish over here just to make it crazy. I messed up. That's okay, though. You see what it allows me to do? If you want to sketch on top of a surface, and it doesn't have to be a sphere, I'm just using it as an example. It could be some type of wavy, undulating surface. It does look like a golden snitch. All right, let me find the end of this guy, and we'll have some fun. Got a bunch of nerds. All right, let me rotate this. I'd like this guy to see how this, I'm fixing to sweep one rail. And if I swept it right now, it'd be like an ellipse traveling along. And I don't want an ellipse. I want a, a pipe, I guess. So I'm going to rotate to the point where it's at 90 degrees with this curve I'm fixing to start with. All right, that's close. Sweep one rail. I know I'm getting ahead of myself, but I just get excited. <coughs> rail, cross section profile. It's interesting. I'm wondering why. Maybe I made two curves accidentally. I don't know. So I can start another one from there. All right. So that can be a lot of fun, and that'll directly pull over to 3D modeling later if you want to make something intricate and pretty. Offset. So we just saw the idea of concentric circles, and I'm kind of lost, so we'll go back to the beginning. Good. Let's keep on using the heart theme. Earlier I made concentric circles like this. I'm using the center command, so I can go back to the center every time. But if I want to offset it, I'd have to calculate. So if I want to offset by a quarter inch, I need to add to my radius, right? So last time it was roughly 7, so let's say 14. But we're not really known for our math in this department. So I'll show you a different way to have the same outcome. And we'll do it with a heart just for fun. Curve. Offset curve. And right now it's offsetting two units, so two inches. Let's make that seven. There we go. We can do it again. And we can do it again. So that's great fun. Let's get some of these guys down to a, a plane. You might know what I'm fixing to do just for, for fun. I'm going to loft these guys together just to see what type of surface I created. Okay. So there we go. 
I love Kano. That's nice. All right. <laughs> we'll get into more of those actions later. Is anybody a Pathfinder and Illustrator? Isn't it, isn't it the best thing you, once you realize how to use it? Yeah, what's your question? Yeah. How would you like close something off? What do you mean? Ah, cap it? Yeah, cap it off. I'll show you what's simple. I'm going to extrude plan a curve, and this is the way I begin all of my, uh, my modeling. Typically, I draw a curve and extrude it. And these are automatically capped because I pulled from the solids menu. So it has a top and the bottom. I'm going to go through the solids menu. I'm going to extrude the planner. What? Did it go through the solids or the surface? Here we go. I should go through the surface menu. I just want to extrude a curve straight. It's extruded, and so we have the problem that you're talking about, Faber. Yeah. If I want to cap it, I can go to my solids menu, cap planar holes, and I'll throw a top and the bottom on there. Yep. Right now it's it's a solid, so it's capped. If I want to delete something, I'll explode. So instead of having three surfaces together to make a solid. Now it has three individual surfaces. Ooh, I have four. Is there any way to adjust wall thicknesses? Good question. And I might as well address it while it's being asked. I have a feeling I might run into a problem because I made this in two sections, but we'll see what happens. I'm going to join. So I have one surface, and I'm going to go to offset surface right here. I can either offset to the outside or hit flip all to offset to the inside. I think three inches is pretty good. I can make it a solid if I want to, or I can just leave it as a surface. Let's say it's a solid. But we can see that we have an issue here, right? And this, in my opinion, is also an issue. This is where I came from, one line. And so I'd have to come in and fix that. All right, so back to the, the Pathfinder idea. And I'm going to keep on running the whole hearts thing. We're going to run that horse till it dies. So if I have a bunch of curves and I want to make a complex shape, I have two options. This is adorable. This should go on like a seven-year-old's door or something. <laughs> but what I want, I just want the outlines. But I can't just have the outlines. So if I want to have this, I've got to come here to, I don't like the trim tool. I always like the split tool because it allows me to choose what I want to delete. I'm going to split this one, enter, with that one, enter, split this one, enter, with that one, enter. Let's see what I have an eye. I got to split this one. So I want to split this one with that one. And I still kind of go over here. I want to split this guy with that guy. So now I have my, my perimeter or my border that I wanted. If you have something crazy complicated, this would take forever and be totally frustrating. But there is a better way, and I'm going to show you. Let me make sure I have my, my whole hearts back. Good. Curve, curve edit, curve boolean. And like we talked about last session, a boolean takes two things that are separate and makes them a new item. Curve boolean, it wants me to select the curves I want to play with and what region that I want to keep. And so I want the outside region, so I'll click the outside. Boom. And that's why sometimes if I'm drawing something in a computer or an illustrator, I'll come over to Rhino because it just has some of the settings that I want. Or I can start an illustrator, do some settings, and come back. It's really fun to play around with different programs and um, hopefully speed your workflow up. Kerbillion, I guarantee you, it'll make you feel brilliant. The way, the way I would import uh, like a top view from Illustrator to Rhino, I would import into top view and then just rotate it like it's a plane. And I, 
you can import a lot of different stuff. This is one of the things I love about Rhino is you have so many options. I want to say you can import Illustrator files, but I don't see them. I know you can export Illustrator files. Either way, AutoCAD is fluent in both Illustrator and Rhino. So if you want to take curves and move them around, these are your two best friends. Yep, you could also do PDF. <laughs> so one more thing on Curve Boolean. I just want to check something for later. Yep. I'm going to want the perimeter for all of these once I do an offset. Offset curve. I want to select all these curves. I have to select them individually. I don't want to. I don't want to do that. Let's make this bigger than 7. Let's make this 14 so there's a good... And I'm going to use a space bar to repeat the command. All right, the reason why I did that is because now I want to use curve boolean. Select everybody, and then I want the outside area. And then I'm going to come back and get these insides. That one's going to be tough to get. Pull them up here. I uh, know. Now I can extrude that. You're so violent, brass knuckles. All right, so that was made a lot easier just by one or two commands. There's something terribly important I forgot to tell you, and I apologize, but I'm fixing to make up for it right now. Like I said, this mouse, it's not like the black and white mouse in Illustrator, but there's two different ways of selecting objects, sweeping to the left and sweeping to the right. So if I want, I forget actually how it works. Good. If I sweep to the left, everything that the, the, marching ants, the marching ants touch will be selected. If I sweep to the right, only what's within the marching ants is selected. Small detail, huge benefits later. Oh, if I do one of these, yeah, like, I'm trying to get, there we go. It's saying that what you're clicking on could be a couple of things, like they're layered on top of each other, and it doesn't know which one you're talking about. And so it gives you this option to say, all right, I really wanted that one. If you didn't like it, you can hold Alt and select it, and it deselects. So Shift to add, Alt to get rid of. Good? So let's get into some more uh, fun curve creations. Go back to my four views, normal window. Let's just drop this down for the menu. See, we did a star last time. We did a triangle. Let's do things that are more interesting. Let's do a helix. Does so anybody know the difference between a helix and a spiral? You're fixing it too. Spiral gives you one more option. Let me define my axes. And let's get this more turns. All right, so they're the same up till right now. Now I can adjust the taper. I don't know, these are very fun. I made a spring. All right, let's go back in and I'll tell you more about them. So the helix, 
you're defining your axes first and then your diameter. However, you can change your pitch. You can change the number of turns that it makes. So we'll go to five. If I want to change my pitch, let's make that 30. Get this back a little bit. But pitch and turns works with each other, yeah? Fun. We'll go back to the spiral axes. Let's do that down to like maybe nine. I know there's a different button for this, but what if you just wanted to coil, a flat coil of a spiral? How would I take this three-dimensional shape and make it a two-dimensional shape? Yes, my favorite tool, projector pullback, in this case, pullback curve, curve from objects, pull back this curve to that surface, ha ha. Now something else fun. What don't you understand? Talk to me. Because I want it flat instead of three-dimensional. If I wanted to make a record, maybe. Because drawing this out will make you frustrated. Granted, I know there's a tool that will let you draw a flat spiral, so to speak. But I'm just testing your knowledge, making sure you're... No, you're not totally out of luck. I wouldn't want to. I mean, I can go and make a new one faster than this. Familiar? Anybody? Familiar? And I can do what seems to be inverse of that command. Do we want to pull straight or do we want to pull like in a concentric circle? Straight. straight. This curve, enter. The shape, it's thinking, thinking, thinking. So I have this guy. It's hitting two surfaces, right? My flat surface and then my cone surface. So that's why I got. There we go. If you're good with curves, the rest of the program comes a lot easier. I'm trying to think if there's anything else I need to mention about curves today before I move on. Went through the menus, how to create curves. Sketching is really fun, but not exactly as precise. There's a flat spiral I was talking about. I'm going to my top view. Let's keep with the heart theme today. And this time we're making out a one. Curve. I need a, I need the evil or menacing shape. Yeah. <laughs> Let's just do a square. A square. Someone who is boring and someone who is compassionate will be known as a heart. I did this project where I was trying to find the average ear shape of the people in the studio for a earphone project. And I needed to know the average. So I took pictures of the ears, came into Rhino, traced the profile, and then I ran mean curve. So I want the average of that one and that one. What the hell is that? It's an ugly heart. Where was that one in the curve? Yes, yeah, in the curve menu. We could put this inside and see what different output we get. Mean curve, that one, that one. Make it happen. It just doesn't make a pretty baby. My favorite tools, curve menu, curve from objects. 
pull back. Duplicate edge is another we're going to get to that's extremely important to my workflow. So let me give you a little assignment. I want you to draw your name in some type of script, not block letters, but script using the either sketch on a surface or interpolate or draw your name, create a surface and do projector pullback. So really fast example. Have a surface. And just for the sake of time, I want to sketch. That's not the sketch tool. I'll be honest, I don't know what the sketch tool is. I want to sketch a fancy bee. That's kind of janky. So if I want to edit this line without making a new one, bonus lesson, in the edit drop down tab, I can rebuild. So right now it has 12 control points. If I was to turn on this one, you'd see 12 anchors. If I bring it down maybe to eight, it'll give me something smoother. So it showed me the, the change version. Do I like that? That's better. Let's do the same thing for this guy. It had 16, so let's just drop that down to 14 because it's close to where I want it to be. Preview. All right, so that's smoother. But I still got a flat curve and I want to make it rounded. I'm going to use project because I want it to be straight. I missed the object. Yes. This is why I don't like projection because sometimes I don't know how it works. Let's try to project from the inside out. Project this curve and that one onto this object. There we go. 